<laughs> Copyright strike for that. You're not allowed to. I don't sing that good. Yeah. All right, let's All right. kick it off. Don't well, forget. You gotta subscribe to Adabox. So to Adabox, next one's coming out. You're gonna love it. Yeah. Um, but speaking better of better and better, these were the magazines in the last Adabox. So we have a bunch. And we have some left over. Yeah. Pick them up. These are. This is a lovely Adabox. Of course, it has. It says make your Christmas for Biden anyways. It has everything. It's got Bluetooth Low Energy in it. Circuit Python and Bluetooth Low Energy articles in it. Collect them. This Support cool cube. Hackspace. This is one of the best um, hacking, making, crafting magazines. 132 pages, beautiful photos, beautiful guides, beautiful yeah. tools. I mean, this is this Save is a it. really nice magazine. And then, oh yeah, I'll go to the overhead for a second. Save it Look, and then just give it as a cotton buds. Christmas gift. That's my that's my bud. That's your um, buds. All right. So yeah, all sorts of cool stuff uh, in here from any kind of skill. It doesn't have to be electronics, although of course, and you know, if you subscribe, get a free yeah. Black Express. So I was just talking to a journalist and. Uh, I was saying there's never been more magazines for makers because I think they were writing about like, oh, like what's happening with Maker Moon? It's like, it's not all just called Make, you know? Yeah. It's, there's Hackspace. There's like Diode uh, Magazine. There's, Diode Zone. I just everywhere. went through the whole list. I'm just like, I, I can't keep up with stuff because too there's, there's too many publications online and print. Okay. But speaking Spe of Adabox. Speaking of Adabox as well, um, so we've sold through the Adabox 14 packs, all the ones that are left over. We only have like a dozen or so left over from... Uh, the bill, just we make a, a couple extra just in case. Um, so if you would like to follow along with the Adabox 14 projects, we now have a pack in the shop. It doesn't have all the extras, it doesn't have the tissue paper, it doesn't have the cool Adabox insert, but it does have all the parts necessary to build the projects such as the snow globe, um, the TFT gizmo, the circuit playground blue fruit. Um, so if you'd like to follow along with the Adabox projects, and we have a lot of them, um, this pack, it basically has everything that you would need to do so, minus the cool box. Okay, this is very art. macro. It's art. I know what's going on here, this texture. This is a very, very tiny LED. This is a 1.5 millimeter by 1.5 millimeter there we go. Neopixel. <laughs> These are small. They're so small, and it doesn't even make sense to me to show them on the overhead because it's just too small. But I will show you as I... Get a little closer in there. I... I little, soldered it to some up. wires so you see, can see it. I want to see how, let's see if we can get that to focus better. That's pretty good. Okay. It's, it's basically like a teeny glowing LED. It's I mean, like, like a grain of sand. It's a, basically it's, yeah, it's just a, it's a grain of salt. It's super tiny, 1.5 millimeter by 1.5 millimeter. I soldered wires onto the bottom very carefully. Um, not recommended that you solder them directly. I mean, this is a little delicate. I use like the silicone wire. What I recommend you use is um, a surface mount setup. So like, you know, like here we have a two by two millimeter dot star. This is a 1.5 by 1.5 NeoPixel. So great if you want to add a little LED indicator um, that uses only one pin, which is really great. It's what I love about NeoPixels. And of course there's uh, libraries and drivers for almost every platform to drive these LEDs. So you get the bare LED, you do not get it soldered onto wires. If you want to, Use little point source LEDs, but you don't want to do the soldering. We have in the shop um, this LED strip that uses the same LEDs, but uh, they're pre-soldered onto the strips. One second. Let's open this up and I'll show it to you. So um, this is the same LEDs, but they're soldered on and you can cut these little tabs. So if you just want the little point source of lights or you want a couple in a row, uh, this might be a better way to go. So you can either pick up uh, this LED strip or you can get the individual LEDs if you are comfortable surface mount soldering um, those little lights. That said, these are the smallest uh, addressable LEDs we've got. It doesn't come any smaller than this. All right, well, that's that. Tiny. Okay. Nope, that's it. Mix up. <laughs> okay, DPS 310. This is from Infineon. And they made a barometric pressure uh, and temperature sensor. It's got a nice range. And it's ultra high precision because it does uh, many oversamples. Um, what's nice about this is it's got I squared C and SPI. We've written a uh, Arduino library for it, working on the Circuit Python code that'll be out. By the time you watch this video, I'm sure it'll be live. And what's nice about this is it's it's designed to make it easy to do precision altitude measurements. That's what you can use it for environmental sensing, like if you want to know what the incoming uh, uh, barometric pressure is so you can know what the weather system is. But for example, 
Here I've got the sensor, and you see it's pretty stable. It's like, okay, the height above ground is about 44.9 meters. And as I raise this above, you can see I've, I've got the wire stretched out. It's like, okay, your wire is about 30, 40 yeah, go centimeters show, long. Show you. Okay, yeah, so yeah. I can show. So as I, as I raise and lower it, it can actually precisely tell. It, it theoretically can do, you know, 10 centimeter precision. Yeah. Um, the absolute accuracy right, cool. might not be as perfect, but this is a good sensor for any kind of altitude sensing. It's inexpensive. It's a great idea for a drone or any other kind of project where you want to have it stay uh, a certain altitude above ground. Um, also good for environmental uh, measuring, uh, measurements, of course, but I think what this is really good for is altitude, precision altitude measurement and conversion. So check it out, it's very low cost, a great alternative to the Bosch BMP 280 uh, at a really great price. It's almost uh, a half the cost. All right, start of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, our community and our customers and our team, is this. Okay, For we have been just cranking through all of these ST IMU sensors. This is the third of the batch. So we've done the LSM, uh, DS33. We've done the LSM 6D SOX, and now we have the ISM 330 DLC. So you're like, okay, there's a lot of letters and numbers. What's the deal? Basically, when you have a six degree of freedom IMU with accelerometer and gyroscope, the accelerometers are pretty stable. Those you don't have to worry about, but the gyroscope, you're going to pay more to have a more stable gyroscope. Because when you do inertial measurements, Accelerometers, it's usually a relative. You, you doesn't have to be absolutely correct, but a good gyroscope is essential to getting um, really good non-jittery, non-drifting um, measurements. So I'll show on the overhead, I have a setup here with the STM32 F405, Hold on. which is a really lovely uh, Arduino compatible feather we did with ST. And I have it connected up to a Feather OLED on this doubler. And what's nice is I can just plug in this STEM QT connector to, and this is the low cost LSM 60S33. So this one is the least expensive. And you'll notice that the gyroscope has an offset. So it thinks it's 2.1, 2.2, 1 1.3, and then you know Z is 0.1.2 offset. So I'm not moving it. This is being held stable against the table. But even just being held stable, you see that there's that offset. And that offset can be pretty large. And that's what it will cause drift in your um, IMU measurement. So if I unplug this now and I plug in the LSM6 DSOX, I'll reset this. You'll see now, as long as I hold it steady against the table, it's, you know, the X is 0.1 maybe. Y is also maybe 0.1. You say I actually need to get more digits of precision because it's under one digit. And Z has about 0.6. So it's much lower drift on the gyroscope. It's a much higher quality gyroscope. It's been trimmed and, and calibrated. So the LSM-60 SOX is a way better quality gyroscope than the LSM-60 S33. It's more expensive, so it's a trade-off. You know, if you don't need it, maybe you can get away with uh, the lower cost version. But if you want to have a higher quality IMU, spend a little bit more, get the LSM-60 SOX. It's got much better stability, um, much better accuracy, and you're gonna get a higher quality output. Then, if you are using this for industrial temperature ranges, so going up to 105 degrees centigrade, um, this chip is almost identical to this one. The drivers are actually, in fact, almost identical. You just have to detect the chip ID. But otherwise, it's very similar the ISM can go up to 4,000 degrees per second, whereas these two can only go up to 2,000 degrees per second. So if you're having very fast motion, um, this sensor will do much better. This sensor is also good for a much larger temperature range, and it's got temperature compensation over that large range as well. So again, for industrial temperature uses and, and situations, uh, the ISM, a little bit more expensive, but you're gonna get much better performance over a large temperature range. And also, again, um, it has a pretty good quality uh, offset for the gyro. So, uh, you know, again, under 0.5 um, offset. And then, of course, you can trim that calibration in software as well. Another nice thing about the ISM 330, which is pretty neat, is um, 
This sensor actually has the accelerometer and gyroscope on the same die. So you're going to get better synchronization between the two measurements as long as you read them both at the same time. Um, and both uh, the LSM-6 DSOX and the ISM-330 have some cool stuff built in. Like they've got a pedometer and they've got interrupts, of course, and um, uh, you know all sorts of like FIFOs if you need them. Uh, there's a great driver from ST and we have a simplified driver. Um, they also have a kind of cool state machine uh, system built in that can do basic um, accelerometer, gyroscope, um, motion detection. It's not quite machine learning, but it's like kind of a state machine training system. And uh, check out ST has some cool videos on how to use the built-in state machine. You have to program it in a certain way. But it's a way for you, if you don't want to go all the way to TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers, you can detect, you know, whether you're uh, sweeping the motion or doing a circular motion or an angular motion, you can do that built into these sensors without any external computation on the microcontroller. All right. ISM 330. Nice to